Good afternoon, folks. I'm Doug Jones here at Danley Sound Labs on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. There's nobody around sitting in our warehouse. And uh, I thought I'd like to talk to you about this uh, SBH-10 that has been getting quite a bit of press. People are talking about it. People are saying, hey, you guys, you say you build horns, but this is clearly not a horn. It's a line array, right? Well, I'm here to tell you this isn't what it looks like. Yep, it looks like a column. It's tall and skinny, just like me. But it's a horn. So why would we build a horn that looks like a column? Well, because you get the best of both worlds that way. If you have a big reverberant church where you need to put a column because a, a large format square mouth horn just wouldn't do, here's your answer. You can paint it any color you want, hide it in the architecture, and you're good to go. But it also has all the advantages of a horn. It has a well-defined coverage angle of 120 degrees by 10 degrees. And in that coverage angle, you get the same frequency response no matter where you look. There aren't any lobes out the top or the bottom or out the back. So you can actually angle this thing away from the wall and point it where you want it. So if you're wondering how it works, stay tuned because I'm going to show you what's inside of this remarkable new box, the SBH-10. The animation I'm going to show you does not show exactly how we build the paraline, but it's a good way to help you understand what's going on inside this remarkable device. So imagine three plates. The first one has a slot cut into it in the shape of an ellipse. This ellipse is one where the major or long axis is exactly twice as long as the minor or short axis. Now, obviously, if you were to cut this slot in an aluminum plate, the center would fall out, but this is animation and anything goes, right? Okay, so imagine that the center stays right where it is. The second plate has the same ellipse cut out, but it is not a slot. In this plate, we let the center fall right out. The third plate has a narrow slot cut into it that corresponds with the long axis of the ellipse. Okay, now stack these together in a sandwich. The center plate forms a sort of an ellipse-shaped cavity. Okay, let's make the top plate a little bit transparent so that we can see the slot in the third plate. An interesting property of such an ellipse is that any line that you draw starting at the center, going out to the curve, and then back to the major axis will have the same length as one half the major axis. This means if you place a sound source in the center of the first plate, very close to the surface of the plate, the sound will exit from the slot all at the same time. But let me show you the rest of the paraline lens to make it easier to visualize what's going on. So first we add a small cone to the center of the blue plate. Then we add another ellipse-shaped spacer. Then we take a plate, pop a hole in the center, and mount a driver. We can use many different kinds of drivers, including compression drivers. Now let's stack this all together. If we were to slice this vertically and look at it from the side, it would look like this. We can now trace the sound path through the paraline lens. If we were to slice it horizontally and look at it from the top, this is what it would look like and the sound path would of course look like this. The cool thing is, no matter how you slice it, with this form of paraline lens, all the sound paths would be equal. All right, so what kind of a sound bubble comes out of this paraline? Well, you guessed it, it's a line source, at least at those frequencies where the paraline is large relative to the wavelengths. But we're Danley Sound Labs. We don't have much use for line sources. Well, Tom realized that you can use this paraline lens to create sound bubbles of many different shapes, not just the line source or section of a cylinder. You don't have to make the axis of the ellipse have a 2 to 1 ratio and you don't even have to put the sound source in the center of the ellipse. If the ratio of the major axis to the minor axis is greater than 2 to 1, the bubble will be curved like this. If the ratio of the axis is less than 2 to 1, the bubble will look like this with some convergence. Moving the source away from the center of the ellipse produces bubbles that look like this. So, Small changes to the geometry of the paraline result in changes in the shape of the wave leaving the lens. The paraline lens then becomes a very powerful bubble shaping tool. 
So, to make the SBH-10, we used eight paraline lenses, carefully adjusted to create the wavefront that a 10 degree by 160 degree horn would create. The result is a column-shaped box with all the attributes of a horn. Now this just can't be done with technology which uses cancellation as a method to focus sound. See, with a horn you get true directivity and you get much more even coverage. So, in a reverberant space, the SPH-10 should yield higher intelligibility scores than other columns. So, I hope that helps you understand a little bit more about how this SBH-10 works. It's the horn that looks like a column. Until next time, I'm Doug Jones at Danley Sound Labs. See you around. The column that looks like a horn. No. <laughs>